We now return to the Park Shore Coin and Collectibles Hour on Fox Sports Radio. And now, your host, Scott Heiligman. Welcome back to the second half, the second half of the Park Shore Coins Jewelry and Collectibles Hour. If you were listening to that first half, you we, we we went a little long because we got into discussion about silver eagles. Oh yeah. And the premiums people are paying and the different scenarios they're seeing playing out. And during the break, Scott was showing me these Monster the boxes. Prices, yeah. The prices. Monster boxes. We actually went on Am- Ampex. APMX, which APMX, is a big online dealer. Right. Yeah. And looked at how people are buying in volume, why the pressure on silver coins is so, so enormous. Immense, yeah. And it's causing And they're prices. all backed up. They don't even have much in stock either. You right. know, And they're one of the largest public buyer on the planet. So if somebody wanted to buy, if somebody asked you to help them buy 500 coins, yep. you could do it. Yeah, we have them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes I can get them locally. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of big dealers locally that yeah. have some in stock at right. times. Uh, sometimes we got to ship them in. Yeah. But some of those things you've shown me. Obviously, we want to avoid shipping it in if we can because yeah. it's, a, it's a big shipment, but it's right. all insured. It's all safe. Well, that, But people like to leave with the product, and we right. understand that. So I try to arrange it in a manner where they can do that. Right. Well, that example that you showed me of the Monster Box at 500 coins. 500 coins. So it's 25 tubes of American Silver Eagles. 20 coins come in each tube. And they're just packed perfectly. They they just store very nicely. And the U.S. Mint sells them as an investment product. It's beautiful. You yeah, know? for $17,200. Right. You know, typically they sell for what spot price plus a dollar would be. Right. So if silver was 20 bucks, you know, you're looking at $10,000, mm-hmm. maybe eleven. they They're selling for 16 now. Right. That's all premium. Right. You know, That's if the amazing. Mint was releasing those, they would be 11000 Right. That's amazing. But the Mint isn't releasing them, and they aren't, and they don't have them. And uh, people like having that U.S. product, too. But you have to be very careful when you buy those, because if you notice, there's straps Mm -hmm. on them. So a lot of people get a little too cocky, and they want to keep the straps on them because of the nostalgia. But they don't realize that people can snip the straps, pull out the coins, put fake coins in there, and now you have 500 coins. Really? Yeah. So if, if somebody brings them in, I've bought several. I always, I will never not cut the you know yeah you i don't care if people i don't care if they sell for an extra thousand dollars having the straps on i cannot guarantee that they're all i have real to coins. you have to look at the yeah because you can fuse the if you're really uh you know really good at it i'm sure you can fuse the the right. straps back on right and they have strapping machines yeah that you wouldn't be able to notice so you just you go through some people would search them too they would search sure. the coins maybe pull out the ones that might be an ms70 and then put back ones that are just 69s. Mm-hmm. If you have two boxes of the same years, right? people would do that. And then they send in the 70s to get graded, and then your box would be all... But people search through them as the point, and they're still strapped. That's I've amazing. Seen, I've seen that. That's I've opened amazing. up strap boxes, and in there was a 2008 ASC and a 2007 ASC. And that can't happen from the mint. No. You know. So you knew somebody tampered. You know, yeah, different tubes. There yeah. was 25 tubes in there. Mm-hmm. One tube was from 08, one was from 07. Right. So they were mixed and matched. Mm-hmm. So be very careful when you're buying monster boxes uh, still strapped. Yeah. I would say don't buy them. If you buy them from an individual. I, I would just right. never buy them ever. Yeah. Even if it's from a coin shop. Right. Say open it up. Right. I want Because why would you ever buy it in the first place without opening it up? Yeah. And searching them. Yeah. Now, you know, what it reminds me of a, of a scenario we talked about back maybe February. Baseball cards were the same way. Yes. Buying you people that would buy a case of cards, go in, tamper with them, yep. pull out a couple of cards the that good they cards. wanted, put them back together, reseal them. They look like they were. People do that for a living on eBay. Shipped. Yeah. I, I was, you know, a victim of it. Yeah. They and just try to get a free box out of it and they sure. give you bad feedback. And yeah. what they're trying to do is go through and get one card. In this case, it was the 1987 Tops. There's literally one card. Uh, it wasn't, no, it wasn't the Tops. It was Bowman. And there's one card. It's the Ken Griffey Jr. Rookie. Okay. Every other card is worthless, literally okay. worthless. Yeah. And um, someone will buy a box, and they'll not find the Griffey. Right. And then they now have a worthless box. It was only $20. Right. But they, got but their, they, want, to they want their, their, their money, money back. back. Yeah. Because they didn't find it. Yeah. You know? That's amazing. Very common. And like you said, it's... And it's, so they say that they were searched or they find a reason. and It's a very sophisticated way of... It's a scam artist. Scamming. People are always looking to get over on you in any way they can. And yeah. 
Well, thank goodness you're straightforward and honest. You see a For lot sure. of things. Yep. We did a whole show on scams mm-hmm. back in, I think, January or February. Some of the things you've seen, and it's just amazing. But this show... It, for some reason, this show, we headed down the silver path because silver's in such high demand. Silver coins, you see a lot of silver mm-hmm. coins. You see a lot of a lot of e- silver eagles, but you also so see a lot of... Generic, so we'll go back to it. So generic coins are what, a generic one ounce. So an American silver eagle is a no, one ounce coin. Right. A generic is just made by any random mint. Now, is that called a round? It's called a round, okay. one ounce round. And those are selling for, you can get uh, $2 over per right. ounce. So you can buy 100 ounces of silver at $23 an ounce, right. or you can buy 100 ounces of silver eagles, which are the same silver content. Sure. That's why it's kind of bizarre to me why there's such a high premium on those. Right. But people want, I guess, American product. Right. But if you're really just confident in the silver, it shouldn't really matter what kind of silver you have. But, Scott, wouldn't, you know? wouldn't it someday when production gets back to a, a, a high level, won't those, won't those prices come down a bit? I mean, you know, theory, we've had but COVID, we've had all kinds of issues, but we get back into mining silver and we start producing more silver coins. There's always going to be demand because you've got industrial demand. And then that's the, it's getting it to the, the supply chain, the whole thing gets, right. gets more expensive. But when those things sort of fix themselves, won't the price of a silver... The premiums no, come down, maybe they the, haven't. Right. Maybe the, maybe the ounce of silver won't as far as its value, but that premium... Wouldn't mm-hmm. that at some point come down? It all it depends if more people are buying or more people are selling. Yeah. As long as more people are buying than are willing to sell, the price is going to continually. Doesn't The spot price doesn't reflect that, really. Yeah. Even though it should, right. if you really research how those numbers are come up with, uh, they're supposed to be numbers based on what banks are willing to buy, mm-hmm. big banks, yeah. four big banks, and then they get a big number together. Sure. But, Scott, isn't that the whole theory behind inflation? Too many people chasing too few products. Yeah. And that's inflation. Yeah. That's what we're seeing with yeah. the coin prices. That's part of it. It's, it's but inflation is more printing too much money. They're yeah. making it sound like they're flooding the marketplace, right. you know. But really, that was, that's, that's kind of the correction that they're going to make. Yeah. But, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's just the, the market speaks. The market speaks. You know. Well. Especially when you're talking about physical items. Right. And it's you've just, told. There's not many other things to compare to. It's not like stocks. Right. You know. Where the number's just set, and you yes. can buy and trade, and then there's, there's only a commission so many. on it. Right. You've told many of our listeners in the past that if you're interested in getting into silver, just as a hedge, you want to collect it, start with junk silver. Yeah. The, the word junk is kind of a misnomer. It, you can call it really constitutional junk. silver. Yeah, constitutional. Old 1964 American and older. Yeah. Yep. And Dimes, that's what quarters, you would suggest. half dollars. Yeah. Well, that's because you can get it for free. You can get it just through your pocket change. Or by going to the bank and say, "Hey, I want a box of half dollars, or I want a box of quarters," mm-hmm. you'll you'll find one or two silver ones in there. I did. I found a couple a few months ago. Mm-hmm. I had to have some rolls of of quarters for a project I was working on at home, and mm-hmm. I needed I don't know, like six or seven rolls, and I found two. And that's, it was such a crazy, five bucks each. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, and they were quarters. I was very, very happy. I felt like I'd won the lottery. Ten dollars, free ten dollars. <laughs> I spent a lot of money to get there, but I had to use the quarters for, for a project anyway. So, um, <clears throat> but that's a good starting point. A great starting point. If you're interested in collecting silver, mm-hmm. you know why a lot of people like doing that too is on generic rounds and all these. You got to figure out if the silver is real. On a dime or a quarter or half dollar, mm-hmm. you know if it's 1964 or older, it's it's a real silver coin. Right. You know, you don't have to test it. Right. It's That's your authentication right there. Yeah. I mean, there's no common date fake 1962 uh, dimes. No. You know, Roosevelt dimes. No one made them. Got the mint mark on it. Boom. It's yeah. right there. It says 1962. It <clears throat> looks like a dime, feels like a dime. And you know what? Some of those old American coins with the high gold content are very attractive. They're beautiful coins. You know, the Morgans, the Peace Dollars, the... Oh, yeah. You know, the the the... The old, uh, very even, well the, made. even the dimes, the mercury dimes are cool. The gold pieces are gorgeous, too. Oh, the aren't Indian they? head, yeah. Yeah. I've Saint got a Cowden. couple of those. They're, they're absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, a couple came into the shop today. They were gone an hour later. Very <laughs> collectible. Very, very in high demand, too. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, during the show, we like to uh, look back at li- readers, com- readers' comments, listeners' comments, and who what they've written in on the website or texted you, which, by the way, if you're listening and you want to text Scott, 239-961-0816. Yep. Call him if you want him to take a look at uh, coins, jewelry, collectibles, right, or parkshorecoin.com. You can reach him through the website. But 
Um, <clears throat> this is a listener in Estero. His name's Derek. And he said, I've got a bank box with coins and paper currency. Kind of leads into what we're talking about. I've got a bank box with coins and paper currency. Can you, what does it say here, meet me at the location for an evaluation? Yeah, bring them over to the bank. Sure, we can go meet okay. over there. Yeah. You kind of call that a house call, but yeah, I mean, it's a that's bank a call. a house call. I'll meet yeah. you at the bank. I'll meet you at the bank. Yeah. So you a lot can of do times it. I prefer them go to the bank first and then... Um, I'll meet them at their house because yeah. there's really not much privacy at a bank. Right. And a lot of my tools are at my office, and I want to, you know, set them out and see what's what. Yeah. But we can meet at a bank, too. Okay. Either way. Or you do may still make the house calls. Oh, yeah, house calls You're all the time. You're making a lot of house calls during COVID. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Sitting in opposite rooms with masks on, but you got oh, it done. Oh, yeah, for sure. We got it done. You got it. People are getting better about it You now. got it done. You know, not only do you buy and sell coins, but you also buy jewelry that includes diamonds yep bring it on in and right on i-75 and immokalee one of the things that we started a conversation back oh gosh last month was how to differentiate between a cubic zirconium what they call cz and a real diamond and that's a real oh, tricky yeah. thing Scott. oh for sure Mo- that's specifically moissanite yeah cubic zirconium kind of tell because they just look so yeah fake right they're always imper- they're just perfect stones. Sure. And perfect stones are so hard to find. That's very Moissanites, they, they make them look more like diamonds. Right. But, but you see a little of that come around. In jewelry, oh, yeah. sometimes it can be in a nice and piece so of jewelry. They're so expensive, too. Yeah. Those mistakes add up. Yeah. And you got to be very careful. But, uh, you know, that's why I started offering free jewelry cleaning for people. Right. Because before I buy diamonds now, it's only fair that I clean them properly. To get the best clarity color, you need a clean stone. Right. Uh, cause dirt can just be dirt. Sure. And if I'm looking at your stone, I'm like, well, look at all those imperfections mm-hmm. and it's just dirt on the outside. Yeah. That's not fair. Right. So you clean it up. So you got the nice professional jewelry cleaning now and the steam and you just, yeah, if you ever just in an area and you want to clean up your jewelry for the weekend, stop, stop. on by. Yeah. It takes five minutes right. and we get it looking like brand new, but it's a tool we had to have uh, yeah. at the shop. And, uh, a lot of times when people, they decide not to sell, they now leave with cleaned items and. Yeah. They like that. Yeah, they, they, know, it's worth a stop. And they inherited it. It's, you know, yeah. they know. Plus, they get to visit with you. For sure. And it's a learning a experience. Treat. If you go to see Scott at the shop, it's You'll a learning something. experience. It's right off of Immokalee Road in 75. Beautiful new office. It's oh, great. Oh, man, it's You're nice. It's you'll so be, nice. You'll be so glad you stopped in. Yep. You make a new friend. Yep. Even if you don't sell. Even if he's, you know, he offers. Maybe you'll you look in our auction and buy something. Yeah. You know, we get a lot of cool items in. And yeah. then maybe you'll say, hey, I want to buy these items. And, well, i got a couple items now I want to sell to you, Scott. Right. You know, that's kind of how it works. And uh, they can go online, look at your auctions, right? Yeah, right on parkshorecoin.com. Parkshore right Coin. on our auctions page. There's an auction page. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got some good jewelry on Very there. Very nice jewelry. Coins Beautiful a lot of stuff. times make it on there. Um, High-end yeah. designer stuff, yeah. You've talked about some of the amazing pieces that you've seen that come through Southwest Florida. Yeah. Some and, good taste uh, down here. Oh, Yeah. Absolutely, you know, and uh, some of those things they end up on, uh, you know, in your in your shop in your office, on the, your website, yeah. and you can find some really yeah. cool find stuff. find some good deals. I mean, some of that designer stuff, it's you know, if it's three thousand dollars on my site, it was probably eighteen thousand brand new in the store. Yeah. Okay, so it's about a ninety percent cut off, eighty right. to eighty percent cut right. from new to used. That's amazing. So people are getting twelve thousand dollar earrings for. 1500 bucks. Yeah. And these earrings have never come on the market, secondary market. Right. Very rarely. Right. Do they make it on eBay or an auction site? People Rare stay, stuff. They don't. There's no comps. You'll find it. And that's why you'll get 110 bids. Yeah. And it'll be the only one for six months or a year. Because mm-hmm. very what? few people buy $10,000 earrings. <laughs> that's, Let's that's, be realistic. Some do. True. And a lot of them never have to get rid of it. But they just what? pass it down. Scott, why at this point, if you can buy. And diamonds are as beautiful 10 years from now as they are right now. Yeah. If you can buy $20,000 diamond for $3,000, why wouldn't you do that? Right. If the grading is Wholesale, correct, it's nice. Exactly. Um, if the size and the color and clarity are right, mm-hmm. why would you? And something like that, you know, as an investment, that's a great investment. Mm-hmm. If you can get it at a wholesale yeah, if price. you buy it correctly. You buy it correctly. Yeah. You know, you and never that leads want to pay us, retail, you know, mm-hmm. designer retail. It's pretty. It's nice stuff, but... You're always going to take a hit when you resell. You're it. in that jewelry store, and those lights are hitting it just right. Mm-hmm. 
and you whip out that checkbook. None of it boom. appreciates in value. No. Just Rolexes, but those are watches. Yeah. You can even buy a Cartier necklace. It's still going to lose value. Yeah. Yeah. Rolexes they, tend to go up because they're timepieces. Yes. I don't know if really any jeweler. Maybe diamonds go up. Yeah. You know, with they time. Can. Yeah. yeah. They slowly go up. If you're willing to wait. Mm-hmm. But not jewelry pieces, typically. Yeah. You, uh, you see a lot of watches, too, don't you? Lots of watches. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people have watch collections, mm. more so than wa- coins. A lot of people don't collect coins. Yeah. They collect watches. Collect, co- collect watches. Mm-hmm. Here's, a, here's a listener. Or they just never got rid of their watches they've had for 30 years. They get a new one every couple years. Sure. You know, they're $1,200 watches. They're now worth 100 each, 200 yeah. It adds up. It adds up. John R. in Benita uh, emailed this question. I have a collect. This is this is a good question for what we're talking about. I have a collection of antique jewelry that I'm in that I've inherited. Can't tell what's 14 carat, 18 carat, or even 10 carat. Can you help me? You know, you've got testing equipment at your uh-huh. office. Yeah. So you can help. Yeah. You can help John. Yeah. And a lot of times Benita. you can just tell John to put Benita if you have good eyesight. There'll be stamps on the inside of the ring. Right. There's almost always going to be a stamp. Right. Uh, sometimes you'll have to look very closely, especially if did you say it was earrings. He said because yeah, earrings an, are very an, tough. antique jewelry. Okay, now earrings might be sometimes a small. they're on the post. Okay, you know, very really small. small. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, usually they are on the post. To be honest, yeah. Um, but it is what it is. It is what it is. That's where they are. But there's always a stamp. I mean, on rings, you'll see a seven fifty. That means eighteen carat. Yeah. You'll see a five eight five. That means fourteen carat. You'll see a 410, that means 10 carat. Now those those are, are the three common ones. Are those usually European when they have the numbers like that? No, or? it's American. No, okay. it doesn't really make a doesn't difference. doesn't make a difference. That's just content, right? Actually, usually Italy says 14K. Okay. So the opposite. But I, you, you see both. Are you finding, because we're in Southwest Florida and a lot of people come here from other places, are you seeing a lot of European pieces? Like There's a lot of Italian, Italian yeah. German. Yeah. Yeah. And, and some of it's quality. Mm-hmm. Italian Italian gold seems very nice. Very, very, very. It's all handmade. Very yeah. well made. Yeah. That is that's that's Italian fantastic. Gold. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, I think it we got time. Its value. Yeah. Time for one more question, and this actually has to do with sports memorabilia. So we're getting out of our, out of the the the, the context of jewelry and silver and gold. This is Bill in Naples. Can you take a look at my sports memorabilia? Most is signed. And I have certificates of authenticity. Should I bring it all to you? Yeah, I would say um, I would say email me an inventory first. Okay, you know to give me an idea of what players you have. Okay. And like we were saying, a lot of times it's not worth authenticating. And for me to sell it on the secondary market, Park Shore Coin has to make sure it's one hundred percent authentic. Right. I don't sell autographs, even if it's a Brooks okay. Robinson. Um, it's worth seventy five dollars. And it costs seventy five to authenticate. It's got to be authenticated, otherwise sure. we don't move it through our sure. store because I don't want to have that customer buy something fake. Yes, you know it's not worth it. And in the COAs, you see some of them are pretty elaborate, but some of them are fake. They just don't mean anything. Yeah, don't mean anything. It's just it's the person who's selling it is trying to give it some provenance. So the provenance. That's what I was going to get to. So you when know, somebody brings it's like you, the, it's like the f- uh, most original scam. Yeah, it's autograph. Sure. I mean, heck. Just sit there all day and practice an autograph, throw it on a ball, and it's a hundred bucks. Isn't that amazing? I mean, it's as easy as it gets, right? That's absolutely so you got to be very amazing. careful. So, Especially if you're dealing with twenty five dollars, people won't even think about it. Right. Oh, I paid twenty bucks to Brooks Robinson. Yeah. Well, this guy sold a hundred of them, and none of them are real. Right. But it's Brooks Robinson, so you just assume they're real. Who's going to make a fake Brooks Robinson? Yeah. For twenty dollars, right? I mean, it's like, maybe oh, even ten. That's not enough. Back to, in the eighties and nineties. But you know, if there's enough volume, people. That's what people I mean. If they cheap. get a hundred, couple hundred of them. Yeah. And then they do it at 15 different coin uh, shows. Yeah. You know, these shows move to city to city. Sure. You know, yeah. you, get, you get into signatures, Scott, and it's... it's and it's hard to catch very them, Very careful. Yeah. You know, there are people that buy um, uh, autographs of, say, presidents. Well, in the past, presidents have, have had secretaries. And secretaries sign. Oh, yeah. Or auto pen. They called auto pen. So, or stamped, and it could look like it was signed. God knows what the heck they're using today to stamp the president's signature. (laughs) What do you think he's using? I don't know. Oh, my goodness. Oh. (laughs) But presidential signatures are very popular. There's a collectible. You see so much stuff. Oh, and if you put it on a classified document or something with provenance, history, 
through the roof, mm-hmm. you know, like a military order signed, even by commanders sometimes. Mm-hmm. Very cool. I wonder if they found many uh, many of those over in uh, on the East Coast with that raid from the other day. Uh, probably. Not, <laughs> probably didn't find much. That's what they were looking Just for. Some Big Macs. The agents were looking for classified documents that had his signignature because they're worth something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm Maybe sorry. some Trump silver coins <laughs> in the safe. Pretty... <laughs> those are valuable. Yeah, those are those are a good premium, right? Speaking of premium, those are some of the highest premium one ounce generics. Really? You find a Trump a Trump round. The rounds? Call the Trump rounds. Yeah. yeah, those are 30, 30 to 40. They're trading like a silver eagle right now. Really? Not more than a silver wow. eagle, but $5, wow. $7 over. Wow. Yeah, yeah. The stackers like Trump. They do they really? Yeah. Wow. Was a remember, big, remember? They like solid money. They like America. Sure. They like, you know, precious metals trading is a very uh, entrepreneurial, um, very American supply demand. It is, isn't it? You know, work hard, put your money in silver, it is bury a co- it, savings It's a combination account, of all the American stuff we're dream, taught. American dream, history. Yeah. And, uh, the hard know, work of mining the it's silver, actual, it's a mining the gold. asset, you know. Yeah. It's something that somebody's worked hard for. Well, think about it. saving it. Our, our American currency, we used to be backed by gold. Yeah. I mean, it's the history of America is... Is no. the hard work, the mining, the collecting, the saving, the keeping, the whole thing, the, the smelting, ingenuity, ingenuity? That's a good way to look at it. The ingenuity. So we uh, we come we the come from a, we come from a big history of, of of those things, and that is probably why you're why seeing America's such a demand. Best. Yeah, why America's That's the best. That's why everyone wants to come here. You know what? Yeah. If you're an American and you love being an American, you got to call Scott. Come to Park Shore Coin. Park Shore Coin. Buy some coins, sell some coins. 239-961-0816. That's 239-961-0816. Or just pop on in. I'm on the intersection of Immokalee and 75. Right. It's called the Napoli Center. You can't miss it. You're on the intersection. You look to the right and you'll see my sign. Yeah. It's that easy. You, yeah. Man, you oh, know. man. It's two-story you're building. Love it. Two-story, two-story building. building. White. Two-story building. Yep. You can't miss it. And, um, you go right around that circle, and bam, bam you're right there, there you aren't see you? It, right on the pylon, Park Shore Coin and that's, second floor. That's fantastic. Yeah, we're easy in, easy out, right yeah. on the highway. So if somebody so coming from Estero, I get yeah. a lot of Estero, even Marco, yeah. anywhere in Naples, yeah. you know, yeah. just hop right on 75, or you just hop on Immokalee and 41, and I'm right there. Yeah. You get a lot of, of repeat customers, too. Most are repeat, yeah. 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 They, they you bring know in a little bit, and they tell their friends, a lot of word of mouth, too. Yeah. That because people they don't have you know people talk down here. Sure, they 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 socialize, they talk, and they go, oh wow, I finally found someone to sell my old coins or my jeweler, and we really trust him, or right. he paid way more right. than I anticipated, and it was very private. He's very personable. You bring it in other places, you, I don't think you're going to get that same personal touch. You know, dealing with the owner and taking the time, you're going to get more of a cookie cutter approach. I think you get the flavor of what you're saying if you look at the testimonials on yeah, the website. That's right. It's really you can see the they're all genuine. They're yeah. all genuine. You can see the the flow of the of the positive comments, mm-hmm. and over the over the, the span yeah, of your them. career here, yeah. it's been fantastic. Now, if you do visit the website, okay, just let let people know if you look at ParkshoreCoin.com, you can you can call, text, send a photo again two three nine nine six one zero eight one six. You can email those photos to Scott at ParkshoreCoin.com. Yep. Park, Scott at parkshortrowing.com or on the website, look at those testimonials. Um, you can uh, you have your items evaluated for free. Yes. We're wrapping up the show with this just so I want to give our listeners it's a like thought. like an appraisal. People call all the time. Do you give appraisals? Yeah. Well, no, but I give a free evaluation and I'll tell you what I'll bid. After, yeah, Bring after, it in. After we get off the show, go to, your, go to the website, ask Scott a question, send him an email, say, hey, I listened to your show this morning and that was great. Can I, you know, Get to know you and get some information. I've got some things to sell. You can watch watch the show on YouTube off of his website. You can listen to podcasts, uh, get that free evaluation, see the current prices on metals, precious metals. You can see the different items that Park Shore Coin yep. purchases. Mm-hmm. So now you get a flavor, not only mm-hmm. from the testimony. Yeah, get to know me before you come in. That's right. See what we're all about. That's what a website is all about. Yeah, a little and familiarity. Keep in mind, it's a free evaluation. And there's no obligation. No obligation to sell. That's important. Nope. So we're wrapping up the show. Uh, Scott, we like to tell people that are listening, if you're on the golf course. Hit them straight. And if you're in the Gulf of Mexico fishing. Catch them. And don't get burned. Don't get Don't burned. get sunburned. Don't get lost out there either. And yeah, and don't get oh, lost. That's a, that's a tough way to go. That's a t- oh, yeah. We live in a beautiful place, but be 
thoughtful yeah. about where you live. And if and all things considered, make sure that you come back and join us, join us next, next, week, next Saturday week, yeah. for another Park Shore Coin Jewelry and Collectibles. Have a uh, wonderful hour. Saturday. And have a great Saturday. Yeah. Take care.